Three years ago, I started a series called Cool Minesweeper Puzzles. It started out with uncommon patterns and logic I found in games. Sometimes people would send me puzzles that would be featured in the series. After episode 12, there was a difficulty spike. And after three very difficult puzzles, I thought the series had reached its end. But today... Three years later, for the first time in the series, we have a composition. Meaning not a position a player has stumbled upon, but instead one that has been composed from scratch. And this is, without a shadow of a doubt, the hardest realistic Minesweeper Nogasing puzzle ever. It has been composed by Endurance World Record holder Koro, and I cannot stress this enough, please. Please, please give this composition a try yourself. I'll leave a step-by-step -step guide on how to play this board in the description. This is a one-of-one -one puzzle, there's nothing else like this. And maybe there never will be. It is insanely difficult as well as unique. Koro has decided to make it this puzzle public after many years. Before this moment, it was only shared with the elites of No Guessing Logic. Now he has trusted me on sharing it, the solution, and of course some lore behind it with you. So please, if you like Minesweeper, give this a try even better, give this many many tries, because you'll certainly learn something by solving it. But my boy, I'm not good enough for solving the most difficult puzzle ever. Okay, then don't, there's plenty of easier puzzles for you to solve, like 15 episodes of them. I hope I made myself clear. Give it a try when you're ready and don't let me spoil the solution for you before you do. Okay, here come the spoilers. You have been warned. Basically, this composition starts sort of difficult and then becomes straight up uh, diabolical at this point. Now, to solve this monstrosity, we're gonna use a little approach called proof by contradiction. Basically, we're going to assume that a tile has a bomb, then follow the logical conclusion drawn from that assumption and observe if it leads to anything contradictory or impossible. You might remember us using this approach on episode 15. Now, as you can see, there are a lot of tiles, so we have to be smart about which tiles to assume are mines. How I solve this is... I took a screenshot that worked as sort of a map of tiles I had checked, led to no contradiction. So I began testing one tile at a time, and after my fourth hypothesis, I realized something huge. Basically, I should not only discard tiles that are the beginning of our hypothesis, but also tiles that follow the logic. Basically, I was testing many different tiles simultaneously. A huge morale boost. One day later, I got it. It is this one. And it is beautiful. So basically, due to this tile being a bomb, this one is satisfied. So this tile is a bomb. This is therefore clear, making this a bomb now. Not to overload these two, this two has to have one bomb in these two tiles, which would satisfy this one, making this a bomb, clearing all these tiles, making this a bomb, clearing this tile, then we know, thanks to these four, that these two tiles are mines, those satisfy these other four, this is therefore a mine, this is clear, this is a bomb, and this is clear. Now, the only way that this five does not overload these two is by having four bombs here, and the last one here, in one of these two tiles. That satisfies these two, this tree determines the position of these two binds, this two is satisfied, this two places these other two bombs, making this tree satisfied, and this two places a bomb here. Lastly, this one satisfies the two, making this tile clear. Okay, that's only half the work though, because our hypothesis gives a rise to other consequences, namely, if there is a bomb here, this two is satisfied. Making these three place a bomb, two is satisfied, two places a bomb, one is satisfied, one places a bomb. Not to overload these three, 
This 4 has to have a bump here, this 2 is then satisfied, this 2 places a bump here, satisfying this 2, bump here, 2 is satisfied, 5 places 4 bumps, 1 is satisfied, now that we know that there is a bump here, this 3 not to overload this other 3 has to have one bump here and the other here, that in turn satisfies these 3 and clears these cells, these 3 therefore tells us the position of this bump, this 2 is satisfied, this other place is a bump, this 2 is satisfied, this 4 therefore needs a bump here, satisfying this other 4. Finally, we know thanks to these 2 that there are 2 bumps here, but since we also hypothesized a bump here, this 2 should be a 3 instead. We found the contradiction, therefore our hypothesis is incorrect, meaning that this tile is not a bomb, it is instead a solution. This was crazy. Shortly after we got stuck again, but like 5 minutes later I got it, basically if there's a bomb here, then this 2, not to overload this 1, has to have a bomb here, satisfying this 1 and locating a bomb here. Our hypothesis also satisfies this 2 and locates 2 more bombs thanks to the 2, but this overloads the 2, meaning we have another solution. The part I did not know until after solving the board and talking with Koro is that this exact point is what spawned the whole puzzle to begin with. Basically, Koro was looking at some theoretical patterns made by Dutch fastest player Archaic, 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 I don't know, and uh, he stumbled upon this one. 111-2-2-2-2-1-1. Not the most evocative of names, but still a pretty pattern. Koro was chatting with a player you've heard many times mentioned in this channel, Scar. Scar that day made a very consequential statement. He said something along the lines of, well, yes, it's pretty, but you couldn't find that pattern on a real game. Koro, however, was not convinced. The thought of creating a no guessing board with 111222211 in it seemed possible. He tried and failed and persevered. Only many, many long hours later, he got it. This is so crazy to me that this pattern is not a show-offy, big, hard chain of logic, it is instead a necessity to bring all the correct tiles in place to prove Scar wrong. Absolute peak obsessive beauty. Thank you so much, Koro, again. So after that it's pretty much quote-unquote easy until this last position, but you know, after what you've been through, it shouldn't take long to find this. If there's a mine here, then logic follows, and this 3 is overloaded. Also, this was a solution even in the big guessing spot, but make no mistake, there was no escaping the monster logic. Once I defeated this beast of a board, I noticed this very neat detail, 6663VB, very fitting. And before you go, if you're still watching, if you want to give realistic Minesweeper composition a try, uh, please do. We need more of these beauties, and Koro, having created the puzzle, still has to experience something like this from the Sweeper's perspective. That would be the ultimate thank you. So, if you're serious about it, I'm sure he can give you some tips to create your own puzzles, with MS Coaches Analyzer. I hope you enjoyed the hardest Minesweeper puzzle ever. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.